So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Francis, and um, like, like the person I introduced me said, I'm an alumnus here. Uh, today, I'll be discussing about how changing politics has affected the economy of my country. Um, so, first, I'm going to tell you uh, the three steps from three steps from Dr. Olson's class, which is <laughs> tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and tell them what you told them. Okay. So um, this is basically what we're going to be running through: brief history of Nigeria, um, the history of politics in Nigeria, and we'll talk about the economy. So where is Nigeria? Nigeria is in West Africa. Nigeria is part of the ECOWAS, which is the Economic Committee of West African uh, States. Um, we, we gained our independence in 1960, and in 1966 there was a coup, um, which led to a civil war in my country. And then I had a question, um, do we have shared ideals or, and do we have a shared vision, shared principles, which is what type of nation is Nigeria? Is Nigeria a democracy? Um, is Nigeria operating capitalism? Are we operating socialism? Because um, a lot has happened in our <coughs> short history and has left a lot of questions in my mind um, from what I can read, from what I can find, because most of our history, unfortunately, has been undocumented by those who have lived it. Um, so this is brief history of politics in Nigeria. Uh, we've had several political parties, um, unlike some other countries that have had, uh, let's say, Democrats and Republicans for 100 years. We've had parties come and go. Um, for example, between 1960 and 1966, which is the first coup that happened in Nigeria, we had 21 political parties. Um, the NPC and the NCNC were the two most popular parties. Um, the prime minister was from one of the parties, and the president at the time was from the other party. And between 1966 and 79, we had a lot of coup d'etat. Um, I just called it coup d'etat a lot because it was like a party. Um, one, one set of military professionals or, or military officers would go in, they would kill the <coughs> sitting head of state, and then they would assume power. Or they would go in and overthrow the sitting head of state and assume power. Uh, and then we had a, what we call a second, um, like a revival. A second chance at second chance at life, so to speak. In 1979, the then head of state, um, General Olusegun Obasanjo, now President Olusegun Obasanjo, um, handed over power back to citizens. So democracy returned, and the MPP is a, is a party that was um, organized by one Fela Kuti. I don't know if any of us have heard of him or know him. He's a popular Nigerian musician. Unfortunately, today he's late. And it's called Movement of the People's Party, which um, tells you that there was a lot of frustration amongst Nigerians. And um, Fela sang a couple of songs about Nigerian politicians, and we failed to uh, receive his message. We failed to receive his instruction. <coughs> we voted two, not one, but two of the people we sang about, and we are worse off because of that. And that I will touch on much later. Um, in 1980, between 1983 and 1999, <coughs> The military boys came back. Uh, we had four heads of state. One of them, his name is Sani Abacha. If you have worked in a bank here or if you are in the banking or financial sector, you would have heard of Sani Abacha because still today Switzerland is still owing us money from what he stole and brought here. Um, also, <laughs> the, the current president is one of these military boys, so I would mention, I will talk about him much later. He was the head of state in 1983. He overthrew a sitting president to become the head of state, and today he was, the, um, recently he was democratically elected. So 1999 to date, we have 40 political parties in Nigeria. They've mutated, they have evolved, they have changed um, like, a, like a snake. They have changed their skin, they have changed their logos, but it's still the same people, it's still the same problems, and it's still the same issues that my country faces. So politics and the economy. I'm just going to jump straight to the most recent changes that have happened in Nigeria. Um, in 2015, there was an election, and I was following, because I wasn't home, so I was here already, and I was following the election every day. We were always talking, I would call people, who are you voting for, who are you interested in, um, who is your preferred candidate? And there was a lot of frustration with the sitting president at the time. Um, his name is Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan. Um, there were a lot of issues with um, the Boko Haram, and there was corruption, and there was all this and that. And Nigerians were frustrated because they said, hey, oil price is a hundred and something dollars a barrel. Why are we still poor? Why are we still suffering? Why are we still going through what we are going through? 
and his opposition, his name is General Muhammadu Buhari, is the current president. Um, he came and said, we're going to bring the good old days back uh, to Nigeria. So in 40 years, between 1960 and 2000 or thereabouts, I went to look at the history. What good old days are we talking about? What, what, what exactly are the good old days? Military coup or economic hardship where people had to queue up for basic things. And when I say basic things, I mean really basic. You, you wouldn't go to a coop and find milk. You wouldn't find tomato. You wouldn't find toothpaste. So people would have to stand in line, and the military people would stand with whips in their hands, and they would whip you to skip the queue. That is how bad it was. And that is what uh, Nigerians more or less voted for in the most recent uh, elections. Knowingly or knowingly, uh, I would not blame all of them. Uh, because when there's a perception that things can be better, uh, then people tend to go for the other option. So, after that of the 2015 election, the Nigerian <coughs> sort of change gained, and everybody was singing his praises. Buhari has come, and he has brought the good times back. The economy is on the increase. We're all going to enjoy. We're all going to have a lot of fun. And we're all going to reap the, um, the rewards of living in Nigeria or being in Nigeria. And by the end of the year, the stock market had lost $10.5 billion. It's the end of the same year. The election was in March, March 28th, two days ago, I believe. Two days ago, uh, March 28th, was the election. And at the end of that same year, $10.5 billion gone. It went because of various reasons, one of which is late um, appointment of ministers. So the president sat in his office for six months and did not appoint a single minister. Six months. Six months is a long period. That's two terms, two semesters. Six months. Yeah, because law students, so six semesters. I have two semesters. He sat in his office for six months and he did not appoint a single minister. So when investors, when business people looked to um, the government and said, okay, who is holding this position? Who is de doing this or who is doing that? And where can we um, help? Where can the private sector help? Where can the private sector um, put in money or channel their funds to in order to help the economy? There was no, nothing to be done and nowhere to be found. And eventually when he did that, when he appointed ministers, uh, Nigerians were most amused because they said, where exactly... Or what exactly have you been doing? It took this long, and you brought the same old people we have been seeing before. You brought the same old faces we have been seeing before. And then in January 2016, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, in January 2016, the president rejected evaluation, which is um, to allow our currency to, you know, just appreciate some more in terms of um, what it would exchange against the dollar. Now. This particular um, sector here, this rejection of devaluation, it really irritates me because the central government, central bank, is the one that is meant to, you know, are we going to devalue, are we going to uh, hold on to whatever the value of the Naira is? But for the president to come out and speak on it, it was... Sorry, I get uh, emotional when I'm talking about Nigeria. It was rather uh, frustrating as a Nigerian because... He would say, economists are, um, um, econ economists are watching you. They are listening to you. Mr. President, don't say this. Don't say that. And the president says, no, I'm not devaluing the, Niger the Naira. He used the word, I will not kill the Naira. That's what happened in quotes. He said, I will not kill the Naira. That he's not going to murder the Naira. And what is amusing is market forces always prevail, whether you like it or not. The, the laws of supply and demand, they actually exist. Some people think it's, uh, okay, I'm just going to do this, and we're going to enjoy a uh, lot of benefits. So what happened to Nigeria, or what happened in Nigeria? Um, the central bank has different rates for different people, for different reasons. For example, my rate is over here, the black market rate, that one. Um, this was earlier, earlier in the month, it was around 450, uh, 450 naira to a dollar. So when my friend was saying 22 pesos to a dollar, I was like, wow. <laughs> so it's 450. And then you have people who are um, importing gasoline because we produce oil, but we still import fuel. It's a very fantastic country, Nigeria. Uh, so we, we export it and then we refine and, and import. So these people are getting it about 280, and then you have these people. This is for the budget, by the way. Our budget has a different um, exchange rate than for the citizens who are going to spend money. Then interbank rate, what you can get when you go to the bank. And then rate for business travelers, so people going uh, abroad and doing business, or people that own uh, manufacturing companies. And then Burundi change has its own rates. All these rates from this one, Burundi change, 
to, to this rate even, it's not available to me because even when I go to the bank, I wouldn't find it. So when my parents, I'm sitting in Zurich, I'm in my house, mommy, uh, please, I need some money for rent, or my dad, I need money for rent. <laughs> and then they tell me, do you know what the rate is? I said, yes, I know. And then I use this one first. It's a bank rate. So where did you find that rate? That's impossible. <laughs> and then this rate. So th these are, are real challenges that businesses are facing because we import a lot of things. And I'll show you where this um, kind of nonsense or this kind of fiasco leads to. <laughs> this is Nigeria, 2016. This is our GDP growth for 2016. GDP growth for 2016. In 2014, CNN said we're the third fastest growing economy. We're doing 6.9%. 6.9% growth in 2014. This is 2016. This is the impact of negative political change in a country. This is what Nigeria is facing. This is what Nigeria is going through. And this was the point where he said he's not killing the Naira, the president. Remember, 26, 2016 January, I will not kill the Naira. The market forces told him, you will not kill the Naira, this is what will happen. He didn't kill the Naira, and this is what happened. And then slowly it looks like it's getting better well, I'm not. I'm not getting my hopes up. <laughs> I'm not going to be heartbroken. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's just the truth. And then this is 2016. This is 2012. There's an election in 2011, so we have elections every four years. Between 2012 and 2016, beginning of 2016, inflation went down around 2013. Everybody was happy. Everybody was enjoying. A lot of people said it's because of the fall prices. And so I want to correct something uh, in terms of perception. People think Nigeria is just oil. Oil is about 13% of our GDP. There are a lot of other things that contribute to our economy. And so when people, when the election came around in 2015, people said we should be doing better because we have more oil. It's, it's the ignorance that comes with the election period. A lot is being said, a lot is being thrown out. And so people said, you know, we should be doing better. And then they voted in the new president. So 2015, slowly going on. 2016, I will not kill the Naira again. <laughs> <laughs> the market will show you that market forces really, really do exist. So this is what we are suffering in Nigeria right now. It's high inflation, it's high unemployment. Last year alone, 3 million people lost their jobs. That's half of Switzerland. Or almost half. I think Switzerland is around 8 million now. So it's almost half of Switzerland lost their jobs. Nice things. And then... Inflation on commodities, because like I said, we import a lot of things, and we consume a lot of things. It's 160, 70 million people. Okay, when you say 160 million people, that's not necessarily the whole market, because you need to know what the purchasing power of the people is or are. Um, so, for example, let's look at Gary. Gary is, um, I don't know what to use to explain Gary. It's like, say, conflicts. Okay, let's just use it as conflicts. Uh, for 50 kilos. 285% change in a year. Or cement that people use for construction, 64%. Or maize, so maize is corn, sweet corn, whatever it is, 430% in a year. Now, while this is changing, the income of the average Nigerian is not going up. Like I said, 3 million people lost their jobs. So 3 million people lost their jobs. There's this kind of inflation, and food prices are skyrocketing, which is, you lost your job, you have no money, you're hungry, and the price of food has increased. So what do you expect to happen? There'll be some crime, there'll be some crime, there'll be some stealing, you know, petty theft and all of that. Um, but this is, this is bad. There's no way to sugarcoat it, there's no way to make it sound nice. It's, it's really bad. For example, rice. Nigerians eat a lot of rice. We love rice. I think we're our uh, highest importer of rice. We really, really love rice. And when the price goes up like this, it means people cannot eat. People cannot feed their children. Uh, just basic food. Something like this, Gary. We don't import this. We don't import Gary. We make it in Nigeria. But the price has gone up to 285. And the price has gone up because I, I'm going to speak pidgin English, which is like the local English that people speak. They will tell you dollar don't rise, which is the price of the dollar has gone up. Going back to the previous, um, going back to the previous chart that showed with the exchange rates, they will tell you dollar don't rise, so the price of my food has risen. No economics to it, just this cup was 50 naira, and now, because of the situation we find ourselves, they will transfer the cost of their transportation, the cost of their milk, the cost of their egg, to something totally unrelated, because that is the situation where we find ourselves. And then, unemployment. So, this is 2015. 
Again, election is this year. This is around March 7.5. Not the best, it's actually bad still because our population is a lot. And then January 2016, again, I will not kill the Naira. <laughs> it's, it's really, really, really terrible. It's really, really terrible. People lose their jobs. And um, in terms of youth, the youth population, I believe uh, when, I, when I was checking, it was 100 million. That's between 15 to 34. The 3 million people lose their jobs. I don't think there's people in their 40s or 50s. Because um, 86 million of that, 86 million of that 100 million people are youth. It's six million of <coughs> in terms of working class are youth, and then a lot of people lose their jobs. It means they cannot afford. So if somebody's just graduated and is starting life, basic salary again, basic salary is 18,000 18, naira, eighteen thousand naira. So let me even go back to this table. Eighteen thousand naira is for uh, basic salary. Eighteen thousand naira is for a bag of rice. So then, how do people eat? Or for this one, sugar, just sugar, for coffee, for tea. Things like that. The price is that high. So if you went to a restaurant and you ordered a coffee, and let's say the coffee was two francs or three francs fifty, it was now five francs or six francs. Well, <laughs> at this rate, the seven francs. Uh, that's how much um, political change has affected the Nigerian economy. So, conclusion. Because my presentation is it's never that long. Conclusion. There was a Ponzi scheme that started in 2016 because people became desperate. I'm losing my job. I don't have enough money. Let's say I have a million naira. Oh, I know this scheme. It's called MMM, which is will give you 30% interest rates. 30%? 30%. So you put in money, you get out money. And a lot of people made money. But Nigerians lost 3 billion naira to one Ponzi scheme. 3 billion. 3 billion naira to one Ponzi scheme. And standards of living have gone lower, which is if you are eating three square meals, you know, eat in the morning, eat in the afternoon, eat in the evening. You will now have to ration it. When will I eat so that I can, you know, last the whole day? Will I take my afternoon meal, eat a bit, and then keep the rest for evening just because you do not have enough? So the standard of living of Nigerians is going down simply because of a bad decision in the previous election. Household consumption decline, which is people are now consuming less. In Switzerland, for example, they try and make you consume a lot, or they try and make you spend a lot of money because they need it for the economy to, you know, to continue to roll. They need money in the system. So you're sitting at home, you're unemployed, you still have to pay insurance, whether you like it or not in Switzerland. The bill is going to come, and then they're going to send you reminders, or you have a phone bill, or you have rent, but money must come out of your pocket in Switzerland. I don't think there's a month I didn't spend money, whether I was sitting at home, whether I was working, or whether I was in the classroom here. Money must come out of your pocket. But household consumption on the decline, which is, I had a watch before, or I had, um, we used to eat a lot more before. We used to be much more comfortable. Our plate used to be so full. But now it's this because I have to share this with two other people or three other people. So people are eating less, which means they are less nourished. People will definitely sleep less because they are worrying about their jobs. Because when you hear three million people lost their jobs the previous year, I could be next. I could be the next person. It, nothing is given. Nothing is certain in this type of economy. So like I said before, um, youth labor population, uh, either unemployed or unemployed, is 45.65%. Uh, 45 That's between the ages of 15 and 30 alone. I'm not talking about the other Nigerians. This is between 15 and 30 years old. This is how bad the situation is. I, I, I'm not here to sugarcoat. I'm just, and I'm not bashing the government either. I know they've been terrible, but <laughs> try to be nice as a Nigerian. Um, so recommendations. In 2014, there was a conference organized by the then president. Um, it's, it's called the CONFA report. So it talks about, excuse me, it talks about the way um, Nigeria can release itself and, you know, um, use its potential and grow. Because right now, the, Nigeria is controlled by the central government. So everything you do is dictated by the central government. If you want to build a port, central government. If you want to build an airport, the central government. If you want to um, build a bridge over the water, over the sea, it is the central government that you still have to go through. So the CONFA report said, uh, made a lot of um, changes and made a lot of um, recommendations, but it has not been implemented. Rather, it was rubbished by 
the then candidate who is the current president. And recently he said, ah, we should go and look at it. And it was given to him uh, as part of the handover notes, but he shelved it. So different issues. And then reforms. We need reforms in the Nigerian Civil Service. Nigerian Civil Service has become a place where the least qualified go to work. So for example, if I was working in the Nigerian Civil Service and I was a permanent secretary, and you told me you're my friend and your son just graduated with the third class uh, from some university somewhere in, I don't want to call any country's names, so I'll just say Nigeria, uh, graduated somewhere with the third class, and say, hey, my friend, my son just graduated now, look for something for him. He's not qualified, but because he's my friend, I will give him a job, okay? And then it continues to grow and you give more people jobs. So you have a bunch of unqualified people sitting in an office doing absolutely nothing. And they are working in institutions that are vital to our economy. They are working in health. They are working in uh, transport, in the finance ministry, in the housing ministry. They are all over the place. It is infested with people who are least qualified. And then our system, we operate a pyramid, which is few people at the top, everybody at the bottom. So everybody's broke, everybody's poor, and then you have a few elites. And so maybe you see them in Geneva in Davos, and they're wearing nice suits, you know, $5,000 suits. They have Rolex on, and everything looks nice. And like, oh, hello, Mr. Senator, or hello, Mr. Governor. How are you doing today? And he's smiling, and all his teeth are showing, or all her teeth are showing. <laughs> and you would wonder, when I show you all those graphs, you wonder, is this the same country you're coming from? You're coming from this country, and you are like a king. You're like a king. So it's, 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 a, big, it's a big, big problem. Uh, when I wrote my thesis, and luckily for me, Dr. Wilson was my mentor, um, I, I wrote about education and its impact and, and how it can um, help the citizens to, to alleviate poverty, to remove poverty and help people to empower themselves. Because I feel, you know, it's the most important thing. It's a, it's a very important uh, aspect of our growth. So ed education also has to do with perception, also has to do with mentality. Um, those people who are coming here, they're in their 40s, they're in their 50s, and they're behaving like that. So people at home said, okay, this is the way to behave. So you have people who, who go into politics, not because they want to do well for the country, not because they want things to be better, but because they want to imitate the same person that they saw come here. So in 30 or 40 years, you might see one or two people who are politicians, who are governors, who are senators, come here in nice fancy suits, maybe then it's $10,000. I don't know what they're wearing on their hand. They have maybe diamond earrings or something funny. And then they will come here and they will live extra, extra, okay. They will live really high class lifestyle. I'm just leaving that way. So, do we have any questions? <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Regarding the oil. You said the oil is it's just 13%. 13, However, as per Martin Patients, BBC in Nigeria, mm -hmm. he said it's 70% of the income, of the government income, okay, good. government income yes. is from oil. Yes. Because of the oil falling price from one to fifty dollars, mm -hmm. that's what affects the economy. Okay, good. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to come to that. I'm glad I'm glad you 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 said it was 70% of what the government makes is from oil, and then 30% is from the other um, other areas. So um, the way Nigeria is structured is the oil belongs to the federal government. So the federal government gets all the money from oil <coughs> and then distributes to all the states. We have 36 states, including the capital called Abuja. Uh, so yes, the income from oil has gone down. However, I, I should have put it here. Nigeria's budget has been on the increase. In 2015, the budget for Nigeria was 4.3 trillion naira. Okay? And in 2016, it was 6.2 trillion naira. The one for 2017 that was proposed is 7.2 trillion, which is, they said, we're going to increase spending to stimulate the economy. We're going to increase spending to stimulate the economy so that people will have more jobs, money going to construction and things like that. This is 2016. Six point something trillion. There's no accountability of how it was spent, so that's another issue. So yes, um, it's, their income has gone down, but the debt for Nigerians has gone up also. Recently, the, the president wanted to borrow $30 billion. It's wanted, nothing, 30 billion. It, it's nothing, it, it, it's nothing, but when the president is 73, 74, uh, in the next 30 years, 
people my age would have inherited that $30 billion debt and would have to service it one way or the other. Okay, so those, those are some of the issues that we have. Yes, um, their income has, income has gone down, yes, but they can look for different sources of income. They can be smart about it. All they did was borrow. That's what Nigeria did last year. We borrowed about two trillion naira. I like what you mentioned about education because one of the best things is education. When people say educate, they will elect the right president, right? So this is the most important thing that you should. Ob objection with education. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really want to object because, for example, uh, the current candidate, the current president, when he was running, there were a lot of questions about his um, certificates. Do you have a certificate, sir? Do you have a certificate? Uh, and this is just secondary school certificates, um, high school. I'm not even talking about university. And the current president at the time was a PhD holder. Okay, so he was a doctor, Dr. Kudlock Ibele Jonathan. But people voted for the person who they questioned his certificate. So, and you had people who were doctors. You had people who were leaders of thoughts. And I will call their names. You had the likes of Pat Tutomi. You had the likes of Femi Falana, Pastor Tunde Bakari. There are a lot of them. They said, oh, this is the person we want. We just like this person. We don't like this person. So sometimes, um, in an, when it comes to elections, emotions take over. No matter how educated people are, emotions come into play. In America, it's quite clear. <laughs> Hillary, has <done> this. <laughs> Hillary has done this and that, and then eventually, people made, yeah, people made their choice. And for a lot of them, it was emotional. Ah, I don't like Obamacare, but I like the Affordable Care Act. It was the same thing. <laughs> so, yes? <clears throat> Um, now we're working, uh, I deal with a lot of companies investing in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and uh, they all have a problem in common, which is they cannot get money out of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, for us, as a company, the Naira is the most profitable currency, okay. uh, just to add. So, for example, and not only us, but every single financial institution gets on the spot transaction 50% revenue. So if you send a million to Nigeria, 500,000 profit per pound? Yeah. Um, but how, my question is, how do they attract the investment if they cannot repatriate? But well, some of the people have been there longer, have been there for a long period, like you have the likes of Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. They've been in Nigeria for, for a long period of time. And what, what happens is they kind of understand the Nigerian system that, okay, maybe things would get better around the corner. But like now, people are desperate for foreign currency. There's, there's no hiding it. If you gave somebody um, an exchange rate of 500, sometime last month, 500 naira to a dollar, they would jump at it. Because, like I said, um, different exchange rates for different people. Sorry if I can just get to that. Side. So different exchange rates for different people. So um, whenever you, you put money into the system like that, it's like, uh, I don't know, like a piranha. With, you just put meat or something. They just jump at it. That's pretty much what's happened. So yeah, we you have, get your money quickly. We have three different rates, for example. We have black market, we have no CCI, and CCI. CCI is a okay. uh, certificate of capital import. <laughs> so <laughs> if you don't have it, you get around 300 something, if you have it around 400 something, and then black yeah. market. So it's, it's, it's a general general issue because I, I, I spoke with somebody who works in a, in a Swiss company and they're doing business in Nigeria, and it's hard for people there to pay them. Because you already had a, an agreement, you're going to pay in dollars. Okay, when I came here, the exchange rate was about 170. That was three years ago. 170. 170 is over here. It's over here. There's no exchange rate that is even at, at, at this rate today. 170. So, what, and black market, black market, we're talking about 300% increase in three years. 300% increase in three years. So, yeah. Any other questions? You say that uh, there is a problem uh, of uh, food supply uh, in, in the Nigeria, Northeast. but also in neighboring countries. Yes. Uh, and it's really like one of the most severe crises uh, in Africa for the last 20, 30 years. Yeah. Uh, can you uh, give us some feedback about that? Um, so, pretty much, there's a, there's a big um, food crisis, like you mentioned, but, and it's mainly in the Northeast. So it's the, the area where Boko Haram had um, done a lot of damage. And so the people who survived that, the people who are in the um, displacement camps, um, they're supposed to be provided for in terms of food, in terms of um, shelter, but people have stolen the money. That's, I'm just being plain. A lot of people have stolen the money. 
society ended up, that's one reason, but they also say that the other reason is there's climate a climate change. That's a lie. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've, I've, heard that, I've heard that reason also. I've, I've heard that reason also, that it's climate change. But the other thing is, in Benway States is one of the food capitals, food baskets of Nigeria, which is where we get a lot of our food from. And in the past recently, there were, there were a lot of attacks on people living in Benway States. If you just Google Benway States attack, you see a lot where people have died, hundreds, two hundreds. They go into communities that those people farm, and they kill the people and burn the food. So you, you have food that takes time to grow, and then you're burning the crop, you're burning the livestock. That would eventually affect, uh, affect um, that kind of situation, the food crisis situation. And then when you add the stealing on top, it makes matters um, really, really worse. Uh, which I, would, I just want to add, um, there's this notion of corruption. Um, for me, the bigger um, problem is incompetence. Because even when you have people who are corrupt and the system works, you will still get um, benefits out of the system. For example, in FIFA, um, <laughs> uh, FIFA, changed, FIFA changed their boss recently. And a lot of people always had issues with FIFA. FIFA corrupted. You know, what, what's the issue with FIFA? But they were always performing. The World Cups were nice. You know, all the footballing events were, were going wonderful, but there were always question marks. So even when there are question marks, you can still get uh, good results out of a system that has competent people. They are competent, but they are corrupt, but it works. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. I'd like to just ask, you, you were referring to the change of government recently. Yes. Um, and, and you referred to, I don't know, is it Dr. Goodluck or yes. Goodluck Johnson? Was there no chance of him staying on if he did such a good job then? Um, there's a chance, but when elections come around, there are things that always come up. Like Jesse mentioned, he mentioned religion. So religion comes up. I'll give you just a, a short um, track list of former presidents. There have only been two presidents who are not from the north in Nigeria. So there's Olusegun Obasanjo and Goodluck Jonathan. So when, for example, Goodluck Jonathan was the vice president to... Yaradua, who is a northerner, and then Yaradua died. So Gulag Yonatan became president. And then you had people saying, it's, the time of, it's supposed to be our turn. Our turn meaning the north is supposed to, be, supposed to be our turn. It's supposed to be our chance. It's supposed to be us in power. So those things come up when elections come around. People throw, throw away um, reasoning. They throw away common sense. They throw away their thinking faculties. And they say, this person is from where I'm from. But this person is from the same religion. Because he's a Christian also. Okay? So you had a lot of Muslims say this person is of our own religion, so we are voting for him. And then there's the buying of votes and all the other voter products that go on, especially in Nigeria. Yes? Uh, can you speak some more about the diamond society and uh, Yes, the diamond system. Sorry, I, I didn't touch on that a lot. The diamond system would be the shape of a diamond, so like this and like this. Uh, most of the people in the middle. Uh -huh. So most of the people in the middle, okay. some rich, there's some poor. It's, for me, I don't think it's uh, uh, possible to just, no, there's no poor person. I, I, I don't think it's possible yet, maybe in the future, but most of the people should be at least in the middle rather than at the bottom in terms uh -huh. of system. I, I'm, I'm more interested to know if you have any like examples, because the pyramid structure is what works in most of the companies as yet. So do you have something in mind? Or is it like in terms of restructuring Nigeria, because that, that, that's what has to happen. We have to restructure Nigeria, so give um, states more freedom, give states more rights to dictate what happens. For example, we have about a million, a million three hundred thousand policemen, and the population is 180 million. So we are under policed, for example, and that is controlled by the central government. So your state, <laughs> you're a state governor, you're sitting in your state, and you do not have any control over security in your state. That's just one example. So things like that, when you talk about um, state policing, when you talk about um, being able to borrow, borrow money or get investors in, you need some more freedom. Nigeria is really uh, choked up, and that's what the confirmed reports uh, suggest changes. For example, I can't run for political office because I have to belong to a political party, which can damage your brand. Because they say, ah, oh, it's just like every other person that comes from this party. What is the biggest population in, I mean, the religious biggest population in Nigeria? The split um, down the middle between Muslim and Christian, about 45, 45 percent. But Christianity is the 50.5 now. 
50.5 according to? According to Nerland Forum. Sorry? Nerland Forum. I don't know what this is. Nerland Forum, it's about uh, okay. census. Okay, I, I, I'll go and look it up. But uh, last time I checked, it was about 45, 45. Yeah, it was in 1963, it was almost 23.5%. Then it increased dramatically to now. Yeah. Because the other thing is when, um, like I said, the, the military coups happen and people lose faith, people lose faith in governments, then they look for faith somewhere no, else. The religion at the same time. Exactly. 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 So, any more questions? Before you clap, I have just one last question. <laughs> Before you clap. Um, this is a German, a German poet. His name is Bert, Bertolt Brecht. And he said, the worst literate is the political illiterate. He hears nothing, he sees nothing. He's not involved in the political process. And so he does not know that the, imp the he does not know the impacts basically that politics has on his life or her life. Or, you know, they don't know the impact of politics on their life. They don't know the impact of changes in politics of their on their life. So when governments change, when the seafood prices increase, they wonder where is it coming from. But it comes back to politics most of the time. 